Hello everybody, my name is Ratnos, and today we have 11.0.7 dev notes and some wowhead posts. Uh, so patch 11.0.7 is coming, it's got a new island and some new other stuff on here. Um, one thing that's coming as well, so the island's got a bunch of cool cosmetics and stuff. I'm going to move my camera actually, hang on, let's get this over on the other side for patch note reading. Uh, it's got a bunch of cool cosmetics and stuff probably, it's got an island that's like under attack by three different factions and which one is attacking it rotates from week to week, which is kind of cool. It has a new powerful ring, Circe's Circlet, which can be found by players. Um, a lot of comparisons being drawn between this and the Onyx Annulet ring. Uh, so that'll be one big thing that we talk about this week. But the other thing that we're I'm going to start with is this racial update section. So uh, feel free to skip ahead. Use the little chapter down below to where I talk about the ring if you want to see that. But let's start off by looking at these racial updates. So developers note, we're making updates to several racial abilities with the goal of increasing viability of some underrepresented races. Many of these abilities have fallen behind naturally within the game's ecosystem, and our hope is that targeted tweaks will help promote increased diversity of racials across all content types. Um, this strikes me as a admirable goal. It's nice to have the races be balanced. I don't think it's necessarily the goal to have everybody, like, race change is a good goal. I think it's more just, like, if you are, say, a Draenei or... Maghar or Nightborn or whatever, you don't want to feel like your race sucks and is bad. Um, so it's nice to see the underperformers buffed. Uh, but it's a little bit different than classes, where with classes it's kind of like those should be actively tuned pretty often and getting changes and stuff. With races, it's more like hopefully it's forgettable. Hopefully it's not something that you have to think about each patch. is like, what race should I be this patch? Hopefully it can be something that your character permanently is and that you feel good about. Um, I personally hate that all my characters are dwarves or, you know, night elves or whatever um, for various, you know, re content reasons. It's like, oh, I was pushing for title this season, so I swapped a dwarf, and now that character's a dwarf, even though I don't like how dwarves look. Um, don't really care for being alliance and the dwarf lore or anything like that, but, like, I wanted to get title. I was going to play the stone form, right? Uh, so that, to me, is the main way that my experience with racials would improve is if they either, like, did one of the nuclear options of letting you swap between your racials from a menu or something, or just like nuked the hell out of stone form and shadow meld in particular, that would go a long way towards making me feel like I could play any of these, but it is nice to see them buffing the numerical side of races on the, on the underperformers. It's just many of these effects aren't really the reason you don't play these races. Like you don't high mountain gets played. It's a, uh, uh, Scott was high mountain re recent race to world first on, on his Druid because there wasn't like a particularly good. Actually, I think Kalturin was quite a bit better uh, as far as races go. But it, like, it usually just doesn't matter. Your race just isn't that in that big of a deal on on you know most mythic progression situations. And then the times where it does matter, you're not choosing based on a little bit of throughput increase. Actually, this tier you did a little bit with Mechanome. Some like more than usual, Mechanome was better than the rest for some people, and it was enough to move across some people's thresholds of like, yeah, this is worth it for me to race change. But like usually. That's not the thing that is needed. So uh, they're doing Gift of the Naru is getting buffed to a two minute instead of three minute CD. Good. Again, like this actually is a utility effect that can be nice to have. Um, one of those things sort of like, so there are racials where it's like, this utility is really good when it's good. And that's Stone Form and Shadow Meld. And then to a lesser extent, stuff like Escape Artist, Void Elf, uh, that's less commonly used. And then there's ones where it's like, this is just generally often pretty good. Uh, and a heal effect, a powerful heal effect is something like that. That as this effect becomes stronger, an extra health stone type, type effect type thing uh, actually does sort of move into that space along with like goblin rocket jump, um, where it's like this is going to be good on a lot of encounters potentially for uh, if your class is light on that effect. So yeah, high mountain, rugged tenacity's effect increased by 50%. Not a big deal, I don't think, for that. Uh, light forge, they're increasing the radius, damage, target capping, though, of light judgment. And they're also making holy resistance increase healing done by 1%, I assume in addition to uh, reducing your holy damage taken by 1%, although not 100% sure. Maybe it's just changing straight up to this. Um, so this might be a good race for healing throughput, I guess, afterwards. And Light's Judgment, I don't know, 40% more damage? I don't know if that makes it crank or anything. Probably still. I think this was usually pretty low on most sims. Uh, Maghar, stats increased by 30%. Now increases one of your two highest secondaries. Cool. 
Nightborn, Arcane Pulse, 300%, reduces movement speed by more. Duration reduced, though, because it's a bigger snare, so it's less time. Yeah, cool effect. I think this probably, like, Nightborn's problem... Nightborn Absolve was one of the lowest simming races, um, and it didn't really have a lot of utility. A big snare, I guess, is kind of cool, like an 80% slow for 8 seconds. That could be useful. There are places where you want a big slow, and Nightborn is now, like, the biggest slow, so... Well, maybe. Uh, still probably pretty underpowered, even with 300% damage on this. Void Elf. So Void Elf is actually a useful, unique effect. There have been encounters where it's been good. Unot was a good example of a fight where uh, Void Elf was actually really powerful. Spatial Rift movement speed of the Rift increased by 80%. Duration increased to 8 seconds. Max range increased to 35 yards. Visual updated and no longer appears for party members. So... Basically now this is like a 35, this is a longer blink that can blink you somewhere faster. Um, yeah, very powerful effect. Could be, there are absolutely, I can imagine, fights where this would be very, very good. Uh, and then they've also adjusted the proc rate and increasing damage and healing by 5% for 12 seconds was duplicate healing and damage and now functions with absorbs as well. Um, so I guess the proc rate's probably been, I actually don't know what, how much what percent duplication it used to do so i don't know if the proc rate has hopefully got has gone up or down or whether this is a power level increase or decrease the main big thing for void elf is the spatial rift change here volpera bag of tricks healing and damage increased by 40 percent it now also uh does do movement speed either at 80 percent slow for four seconds or a 20 percent movement speed increase for four seconds affecting a single target so this will help increasing an ally's movement speed by 20 percent is mostly helpful just when it's on you but 20 percent isn't really a big enough number that you'd ever really care about this worgen dark flight now stacks its speed bonus with other movements increasing effects actually pretty poggers effect uh that does make this a lot more relevant than uh it otherwise would have been certainly i i would say probably still unlikely to be something you, a utility piece you'd ever need to swap into but that's nice Zandalari, regenerating no longer cancels from periodic damage effect. Its cooldown is longer and it heals you for less. But this is actually probably still a buff. Regenerating was pretty hard to get good value out of because damage would cancel it. And now if it doesn't, especially against a dot is the perfect case for this. Something like a tank as well is a great example. Like there are tanks where you're a blood decay, you have a stack or two stacks of the ration and tank dot because your other tank... It was bad, like I am, and I've left my Blood Decay co-tank with two stacks. The boss flies away, you don't have anything to death strike. Now you can sit there and cast Regenerate and, and heal up, whereas before you wouldn't be able to because the tick would cancel it. So this is actually quite a sizable buff uh, for... there, were, Except in cases where you weren't taking any periodic damage effects, where you weren't actually taking any damage ticks, which did exist, but were pretty rare. Um, I think this is a huge buff to the actual usefulness of Regenerate and... Uh, Embrace of Akuna healing increased by 300%, chance to trigger increased by 250%, Bronsomdi increased by 50%, and Kimbul chance to trigger increased by 400%. So they're just trying to make the numbers more competitive on this as well. Uh, so yeah, interesting changes here. Again, I think that this is good set of changes. It will make playing these races, if you're already playing them, feel better. It might have generated now. There, This might move Void Elf into the realm of like actually being a useful tech choice for a certain really high-end mythic fight or something like that. Probably doesn't change too much else. It, it's not going to, you know, this is not going to make these effects as valuable as Stone Form or Shadow Meld for M plus or anything like that for uh, players that feel compelled to swap for those reasons. And, but for players that don't, it's just nice that these races are getting better. These, like Nightborn in particular, very cool race. A shame that they've always been like so... It's been it's it's always been like the lowest simming race and the lowest utility race, which is an unfortunate place to be. But races are low impact enough that you can just be fine. You can just play one that looks cool in ninety nine percent of cases, and that's totally fine. So um, I would like to see that increase to one hundred percent, but I'm not trying to argue that it's currently more than one percent of cases that it's bad or anything like that. Uh, okay, let's talk about the ring. Uh, so first, so. Let's talk about Onyx Annulet first. So patch 10.0.7 also had a ring with three sockets that you got from a new island. And I hated the Onyx Annulet. I thought that ring was super stupid. Uh, I thought it was awful for a lot of different reasons. One of which was... So it had a few different things that were bad. It didn't do anything cool. There was nothing about it where you were like, oh, that's cool. It was just all boring. You know, it felt like a kind of... 
uh, afterthought of an item that was, it reminded me of like Shards of Domination where it's just like, this is boring and doesn't have anything, nothing about this like appealed to me. So that was a problem I had with the Onyx Annulet. Um, it also was badly tuned. It was predictably badly tuned. And it, th then it required a set of predictable, you know, buffs and nerfs to various stones to make it good. And then it needed to get nerfed into Oblivion so you didn't keep using it into the next tier. And it was good for some specs and bad for others and was really good for some specs and pretty mid for others. Um, that was something I didn't like about it either. It was annoying to set up on your alts to get the to get the stupid ring and get the, the gems on your alts. That was annoying. Um, and it was also badly tuned in PvP, which right off the bat, they're nerfing it by mostly 75% in PvP and 50 for, I guess, one ring. So um, there is... That's so of those problems, there a lot of these are already addressed for 11.0.7. Um, the cool side of things, one thing that it's doing that's cool is it is a ring with a transmog effect. That's already cool. I think that's sick. I think that's a something interesting and special and cool about this ring that uh, I think is is uh, is good on that front. Um, the they've also got a tuning goal for it of making it good this season and potentially into next season as well. Hopefully they hit that. That's something we don't know if they're going to do yet. We do have data mined gems of what they are here. These look very similar to the boring um, Onyx Amulet gems for the most part, um, but there's a little bit less of them. There's fewer of them in total, right? There's only the 12 that we've seen so far here, uh, which probably makes the balancing side of things easier. And it's kind of like, oh, there's one shield. There's one AoE heal. There's one smaller AoE heal. There's one that casts a random uh, effect at 150% effectiveness. One that gives you stamina, size, and being above a certain health threshold causes attackers to take damage, so obviously like a tank one. Uh, one that has a low chance of triggering allies' gems, and when an allied player dies, this effect is triggered immediately. There's ones that give stats. That's something the Onyx Amulet never did, and this will go a long way, if it's well-tuned, to removing the thing where it's like, Outlaw Rogues loved this, Warlocks hated this. That was something that was true of Onyx Amulet. That was one of my reasons I didn't like it. And if these are tuned properly, this is going to mean that some casters and stuff, people that really like stats, will be able to just take stats on their ring. Uh, now, you might be saying, oh, well, you're giving up the cool ring effects, but like, really? Who cares? Are these effects cool? Maybe they will be. These effects could be cool. The main way that you make these effects cool is you give them like a cool animation and you probably like buff their damage and reduce their proc rate so that you actually when you when they proc you and you're out in the world you see a mob take 20 percent of its health and a cool lightning bolt hits it like though that's like the hero talent school of making an effect cool um and that could happen for these effects but for the most part these are probably just going to be forgettable you're probably just going to look at your details meter and be like oh this did five you know this is my fifth top damage was my my citrines or whatever um if it's higher than that that's probably something I'm not going to like. I did One thing I didn't like about on Onyx Annulet was there were some specs where you looked at and it was literally their top damage was Primordial Stones. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't happen here. But because of that, because these other effects are boring, that should make it feel less bad to just take stats. And hopefully taking less taking stats is a competitive or close to competitive option for a lot of specs if you want to just opt out of these procs and just have stats. Stats make your class feel better in a lot of cases. Mastery and Haste in particular, crit for some specs. Um, so yeah, I like this. I think this is also a good sign here, something that they were very stubborn about not doing with the Onyx Amulet, but I think something that they are, th this gives them a big safety valve for the, the tuning of this ring. Um, as long as these are again, actually competitive numbers on these effects. And then we've got a damage proc. Uh, we've got a damage proc that bounces to nearby enemies and a five target one. So one target, two target and five target damage. One target, two target, and five target healing or absorbs. A couple of, like, one tank one, three stat ones, and then two that kind of trigger other gem effects. Um, so a lot simpler. Like, the Onyx Annulet had, like, a bunch of different damage proc ones, some of which were just badly undertuned, some of which were massively overtuned, and then a few weird ones that were, like, you set up, like, a loop to trigger one over and over again, and that was, like, or the, where one triggered the other and stuff. And uh, So this seems a little bit less convoluted, which is a good thing given that there wasn't actually gameplay to the Onyx Amulet ring, it's not like it set, set up a, a button pressing to make a cool thing happen. It was just like you slot the right ones in that you see on the WoWhead page for what which ones are good. And uh, yeah, I think this is a lot better. I think if these are tuned well, this is actually the kind of thing where you might be able to actually choose between these 12, depending on the situation you're doing, right? Because literally if it's like, oh, 
So the healing ones, you know, there'll probably be just a, a right amount of, or maybe just take all of these. But for a damage dealer, single target, two target, and five target damage effects, that sounds like the kind of thing where you actually would be able to swap them out depending on the content. The other thing I hated about the Onyx Annulet, as I, one of the things I mentioned, was the alt situation. Using the Warband system, hopefully, will give them the possibility of making this good for alts. It's it's possible. Like this could this can be a lot less annoying for alts picking up than the Onyx Annulet was. Uh, so that I'm also hopeful for. So yeah, TLDR, um, Cersei's Circlet is already better than the Onyx Annulet on several of the categories that I hated the Onyx Annulet for. And then there are still a couple of question marks on some of those other categories where it may either succeed or fail depending on uh, tuning and stuff of those effects. So that's my take on Cersei's Circlet. Uh, I think it's cool. I also just finished reading Cersei, uh, a cool book. It's spelled differently, it's spelled with an I instead of a, a Y, but if you're looking for a cool uh, Greek mythology book, you kind of need to, you don't need to, but it's good if you know what happened in like the Odyssey and stuff, but cool book. Any, 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 anybody who can read out there or listen to audiobooks, I listen to the audiobook version. I usually listen to audiobooks. Uh, then that's a cool book you could, you could listen to. So that also makes me like this ring a little bit more because that was a cool book. Uh, okay, I think that's it for... Oh yeah, also you can't fly on the island, it looks like. Maybe there's some way that you can get rid of that at some point, hopefully. Um, yeah, because that would suck long term. Hopefully it's like the first couple weeks you can't fly and then once you've done something on all three of the invaders or something, you can fly. Hopefully that's the plan, or Blizzard makes that the plan retroactively once everybody hates it. Because I've always hated the, the bonus zones that you couldn't fly in. Uh, so that could be a bummer about this patch. Anyways, that's it for this little update video thing. Hope you've enjoyed. Uh, I will try and keep making videos probably once a week as they have patch 11.0.7 changes, uh, as we get class tuning and stuff. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and stuff. Like the video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.